Well, just as promised, just as advertised, we're jumping into the guts of this machine, and the one with all the numbers and letters and things. Yeah, we did that in video one if you want to know more about the outside and how punch and laser comes together to save you time and money and resources and space and all of those things. But we're in the guts now. We're diving in, and I got Steve here with me because tap was cool to me. I thought some of the components of lifting heavy components up was cool to me. These brushes are real soft, and they seem cool. To okay, a lot of things are cool to me. I get it, but I want them to be cool for you too. So Steve, let's go over some of the details inside of this really nice machine. Yeah, yeah, so starting here, this is gonna be where your turret is, and this is gonna be our Wiedemann style tooling turret. So this is 44 stations with four auto index stations, largest station being 4.75 inches. We also build this again in a, in a thick turret spring style layout, which is 46 stations, four auto index stations again, max station size being four and a half inches. And it's, it's a comprehensive setup. It, it's, it's got a lot of different flexibility and uh, it's something that's really worked for us in, in, in the long years that we've been doing turret punch. Well, Steve, before you leave this section, which I think is very important, is uh, some of these components are quite heavy, yes. aren't they? Yes. And there's something just over your left shoulder that I think is worth bringing up. And I didn't want to leave this area just yeah. yet because I can only lift about five or 10 pounds in my old age. Yep. And I wouldn't want to do that all the time. So let's talk about this little piece too. So this is a standard feature for us and it's called a tool lift, tool lifter, tool balancer. So basically what this does is when you get into these larger tools, as most operators and just about anybody who's ever run a turret punch knows that these are heavy to lift up with one arm kind of coming out of this turret. So what this does is it comes over, it's uh, air driven, and it's just uh, it just gives you a chance to bring that to, you know bring that arm down. You can attach it to the top of the tool, lift it up, and now you're saving your back, you're saving your neck, you're saving all the your arm, your shoulder, all the things, and you're making the operator not hate his life. That almost sounds like it should be a song. Yeah. Saving my back, saving my neck, saving all the other things as well. Yeah, was there a song like that? <laughs> I think Something so. I think is cool as well as I open this up for you. I, I want to be your Vanna White a little bit today as I open this up for you. Is the tapping, because tapping I think is unique in this situation. When we're talking about a lot of 2D laser cutting and punch pressing, tapping is, well, something I didn't expect to see when you first opened up the machine. Yeah, so tapping's been involved in punch press for, for a long time. There are tapping capabilities, but it's limited. It's limited on thickness. It's also limited because you gotta use a station to, to do the tapping. It's limited on a lot of things. So what we decided to do is we incorporated a tapping unit that's part of this machine. That's all tied into the, the, to the programming capability. And now what we're using is we're using regular machined or form taps in this collet here four different stations, anywhere between M2 and M10 taps, and we can get up to a quarter inch thick material and tap that material, which is which is very, very unique. Again, a standard feature with the MF3510HL, MF3048HL, something we feel like is very viable because again, we're trying to make the process as comprehensive as we can. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's really I, cool. I started this whole thing off with it's cool, but I'm gonna keep going with that word. No, 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 you're not wrong. <laughs> and even, and even this, this, this unit has some really unique features. It has tap break detection. So that way, if any tap breaks inside, which we've all, we've all seen this happen, it'll, it'll, it'll determine that that's happened. It'll alarm in the machine. And that way we're not slamming down a, a broken tap. Which I have done before. All right, Absolutely. let's slide a little bit over to these brushes. Yeah. Now, I think these might actually be softer than the bed I sleep on in most of my hotel rooms. Now, I don't know if that's of significance to what you're about to talk about, but the softness is something that I noticed. Yeah, and it's, it's important to mention, you know, obviously we're doing a lot of, of different material with this machine. We can do stainless, we can do copper, we can do aluminum, and sometimes certain parts, you know, you got to be careful about scratching. So brush table is, is becoming a very, very favorable type of table type. However, in typical turret punches, brush table has been a concern because as you get to thicker, heavier gauge material, the brushes can flatten. It can become a consumable cost where you're replacing brushes all the time. We decide, decided that we wanted to give the customers the opportunity to have brush table but still do the thicker plate. So we decided to incorporate high density nylon brushes that are specifically meant to withstand the weight of five by 10 quarter inch material, which is what this machine can handle throughout the longevity of the machine. 
Same thing goes in the laser portion of it. Not only are those high density brushes, but those are fire resistant, heat resistant brushes. So that way if any slag or dust or molten material lands on those, we're not burning the brushes down. Again, forcing the customer to have to replace a lot of consumable cost. This machine is meant to be low cost when it comes down to the overall overall maintenance and lack thereof. Can I ask you an undereducated question? Please. One I had not asked off camera and had no prep for whatsoever. What is it normally made from if it's heat resistant and you don't want to catch fire and you're playing with lasers all the time and you're trying to save your customers money, what is it normally made of? So with lasers you have slats and the slats are kind of what you what you're having a lot of that material fall on. So it's unique because we're not using slats. So we needed a solution for that in that we don't have the slats, but we also have this molten slag and material that's coming off of the laser cutting portion. So that's the reason why this is such an important process. So undereducated question, but a really educated answer. I do appreciate I do that. I do now, I don't know everything about this machine, and I know there's so many bells and whistles to it that I don't want to miss anything before concluding this conversation. Have I missed something today? I believe there's something in this general area that you wanted to express or share yeah. to the audience today, right? Yeah, I do, I do. There's a few things on this machine that I think are really important to highlight that I think were really, really well thought out to make sure that they're part of this. Uh, the first thing being that we use programmable work holders. So what these work holders do is you can set the, the distance between these work holders in the program initially, and this allows you to keep those work holders out of the range of where the punching will occur and it'll let the programming do that thought process for you. Uh, the other thing that, that, that we have that's unique is in the laser cutting portion, we have, or I should say, this is standard, but there's a unique portion. We have shutters that come down, and that's to keep all of the laser, the laser cutting debris and the dust and the, and, 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 the, and the slag in this tight area, this little four inch, six inch by five foot slot where the where the dust collecting system occurs and not preventing and preventing the light and the and the debris from entering elsewhere where it can cause you know possibly some 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 heat on your parts it can cause the machine to get nasty those things one of the unique things that we do is we actually have a turret shutter and we thought of this because well, it's great that all of this slag and dust is not getting anywhere else in the machine, but the most important place we don't want to get to it is in our tools. You're definitely not. Right, so we have a, a separate guard that even comes down when the laser cutting is occurring that, that also is, uh, is preventing that, that, that dust and debris from getting into the, uh, from getting into the turret. Uh, some more standard features. This machine includes a, it's not here because of some, uh, obviously the, the show, but it has a slug conveyor that will come at a kind of a 90 degree angle here, come underneath the table, and there's a, there's a large slug bin there that can be pulled out by the operator straight away. Take the slugs out, replace them. You can, you can try to put some type of, of a larger bin in there. It's totally up to the customer. Fanuc control, Fanuc motors, Fanuc drives, everything is Fanuc. Uh, obviously we wanted things to be uniform, we wanted to be with a control and a company that is not going anywhere, it's the most universally used control, most universally used components, so we've been using Fanuc for a long time and we've dialed the control and these components into what our machine does. Final thing about this machine that is, is really cool that we decided to do is this design being our 33 ton is a two-piece design. So what we did this for is we're hitting with 33 tons of force on this punch press and we have a 50, 60 micron beam on this laser head. Well, what if you're hitting and all that vibration can transfer across the table from the punch to the laser? Now we're talking about misalignment, we're talking about issues. So what we did is by having a two-piece design where the press frame is separate from the table, we can disengage the press frame and the table from one another while we're punching, keeping all that vibration restricted within the, the, the press frame. And then when we laser cut, we're re-engaging so we still get our accuracy, our flying optics, all the things that we want so we have an accurate and consistent laser process. Some really cool design things that we decided to do and, and we feel really good about for longevity purposes. It's incredible. It's all incredible. I mean, I guess that's what comes with the history of you guys at Miratech, right? And being Japanese designed and created and years of development and bringing it here to the U.S. It's just, we use the word cool a lot today. And I think the audience watching right now can agree. 
It's pretty darn cool, isn't it? We started it, we talked about it the whole way through, and we finished that way. Are there any closing comments that you'd like to say to the audience watching right now as our first video was an overview of how this all works in case you guys missed that. Second video was tearing apart this metal right here and showcasing all the significant portions of bringing together punch and laser and how I can save time and money and sharing that in a separate video. And now we've closed it out with the guts today. So I just wanna leave an actual moment for you to say, come check us out or whatever it is that you'd like to close with. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we really are excited about this product. We really want to give everybody an opportunity to see what we can do. Punch Press is what we what we do. We've been doing it for decades. And and, and this is something that has, has taken some time for us to, to feel confident that it's it's ready for the for, for us here in the US market. But we are ready. This is a machine that has unlimited capability, unlimited capacity, unlimited uh, potential, and uh, we just love to show you guys what we can do. So any opportunity that you give us, we really appreciate it. Very well said, Steve. I know that you are a boss. Now, I got to figure out if you have some gold, but this is my friend Steve Goldboss. This is one of those machines that could chain your shop. If you're into fabrication, give these guys at Muratech a look. There's a reason why they've been around for so long and constantly. DNA, DNA is automation, and they're bringing it to you. This is my buddy Steve. This is MTD CNC. We appreciate you watching.